everybody. You would think with the writer's strike over, there would be a flurry of activity. Uh, I don't know if they actually ratified the deal yet, though. Uh, but, you know, they're allowed to start working again, and the uh, news engine really hasn't uh, started up, unfortunately. Uh, but, you know, I wanted to at least have two live streams this week. I don't think there's going to be a live stream tomorrow, uh, but I'm throwing myself into my Loki breakdown for this evening. So that'll be all ready to go after you watch tonight's episode. Who's watching Loki tonight? I'm really nervous about how Loki's going to do. Hey, Daniel. Oh, I guess I should make it a poll instead of informal, just ask me, just tell me. All right, I'll do a poll. Are you watching Loki tonight? When it drops tomorrow, waiting to binge, and then um, I'll do tomorrow or weekend, because some people, I don't know why you would wait, and then waiting to binge, and then finally not watching. Oh no, so scary. So you don't have to be a member, a member, only members can comment during a live stream, but anybody can vote in a poll. So if you're watching and you don't happen to be a member right now, no worries, I'm glad you're here. And you can still have fun by voting in the polls, uh, in the poll. Uh, so, so anyway, uh, so I thought, you know, we should really do a live stream, which is why we're doing another Ask Me Anything. Uh, I just felt that it would be too long without live streams. Also, by the way, I'm not going to continue to break down Gen V. Uh, I think that there's just too little interest in Gen V, unfortunately. And I find that very shocking. It's so well reviewed. Uh, but people, I, I'm curious to see what happens when, if it ever pops up on Nielsen. Uh, but I think that it's just very hard for that show. I think maybe they didn't make it clear enough that it's part of the boys. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Ivan. What I'm going to do is I'm going to um, break down the whole season when it's over. Uh, so I will break down Gen V, uh, but I'm going to wait and do a season breakdown instead of doing it episodically. Because, uh, you know, even though the show is amazing. And by the way, tonight's episode, it drops like about an hour before Loki is going to drop. They usually drop uh, Amazon Prime shows at 8 p.m. Uh, you know, it's just, I mean, you thought people didn't pay attention to Gen V before. Wait until they find out uh, uh, when Loki starts dropping. Or maybe nobody will watch either one of them, which is very scary. Uh, but yeah, uh, I, I, I'll ask you about Gen V in a minute. We'll do another poll. Poll, poll a palooza, my friends. All right, so let's see what the votes are for uh, this, for watching Loki. 43% uh, are going to watch it when it drops, and 27% are going to wait for tomorrow or the weekend, whereas 22% don't plan to tune in, but 6% will binge. That's still pretty good, though. That's a little under 80% plan to watch, so whew, that's, that's somewhat encouraging. And then let me ask you about Gen V. Uh, are you watching Gen V? And then we'll do questions. So we're like, yes, love it. One second, Jake. Uh, yes, love it. And then we'll do tried it. Nah. Then, uh, then didn't hear about it. And then not watching. Okay, while you guys vote in that, let me ask, answer Jake's question. Jake says, do you think we will see Deadpool in a Loki post credit scene or any fun cameos in the show? Well, I've seen four episodes. I'm not spoiling that, uh, but I appreciate your question. Uh, I, don't, I just don't want to answer anything about Loki. Just enjoy, just enjoy the fun. And then as for Joseph says, have you heard anything about Jeff Loveness leaving Kang Dynasty? Also, any other MCU tea you can share? Not at the moment. You know, not a lot of stuff. Oh, thank you, Dallas, for gifting a membership. Not a lot coming out. You know, things are still very slow, even though I think that maybe they're writing, waiting for the actor strike to also be over. But, you know, things have not picked up and progressed as quickly as one would have thought. And Alexander Wilson says, I'm watching the NFL tonight because my team is playing, so I'm not going to be able to wait. I have to watch uh, Loki tomorrow. The NFL 
It's hard competition. That's right, Thursday Night Football. Um, that's interesting. Loki is so good. I hope that you watch it right away or as close as you can to when it drops. Uh, but yeah, football is tough. That's maybe a problem with the Thursday night drop, maybe. Maybe they should have stuck to Tuesdays. We'll see. And David says, I'm happy these two years of membership. Uh, I'm happy for these two years of membership and for more to come. Lots of love from Guatemala. Guatemala. Ah, oh, yay. Thanks, David. I'm glad you're enjoying your membership. Max says, how would you feel about Megan Fox's mystique? Megan Fox cannot act. You know, I'm glad she still has found a way to keep her career going. She does seem to have some fans, which is awesome. Uh, and she can still move the needle. When it was announced she was going to do that vampire character in Mortal Kombat, she trended for a very long time. So that's awesome. Uh, but she can't be in an A movie like uh, um, anything to do with the MCU or X-Men. Frosty the Mexican Snowman says, Another game is getting the live action treatment. Keanu Reeves is in cyberpunk. Well, he's always been in that game. Do you mean like, are they going to make a cyberpunk movie? I mean, that was kind of old news about Keanu being in that game. Wasn't that like from a year ago or something or two years? Buck's Basement says, Grace, can you please do a One Piece poll? But what would, Buck's Basement, you sure love One Piece. And I love it. I'm so glad you like it. Uh, Roberto says, hi, have you heard or like music of Demi Lovato? Ah, uh, you know, I gotta tell you, not a big Demi Lovato fan. I mean, I know she's had a rough time. I applaud her perseverance, uh, but I, I'm afraid I'm not a fan. Uh, Lucky says, can we get a mini review of Only Murders in the Building? Oh, that's true. I really liked Only Murders in the Building. I'm very curious if they're going to do some stuff in L.A. next. Uh, oh, look, Michael asked the same thing. Uh, if they're going to maybe do like uh, a little bit of L.A. for season four, because you know, multiple characters talked about heading to Los Angeles. But then it seemed with the way things ended that they couldn't leave the building. I'm curious to see what they decide to do. Uh, but I liked it. I liked it a lot. I think it's a comfort food show. Uh, it's like a good dip like, or, or a good schmackery cookie. What advertisements for schmackeries? I still haven't headed over there, but I'm going to get over there. Uh, but I think, I think Only Murders is a really fun show, and I just like having it on. And again, it's a little like Ted Lasso. Even if it loses a little bit of its quality, you just like being in the world so much that you're like, this is fine. I hope it goes forever. Oh, let's see here. Dimitri says, I was super busy on my birthday when you streamed this week, but I'm glad I'm getting this. Thank you for all your knowledge of the year, over the years and educating me. Oh, look at the tears of joy emoji. Oh, my pleasure, Dimitri. I hope you had a fantastic birthday. All right, hold on. Let me, um, let me close this poll, and then I can just focus on your questions. Hold on. Not watching. 47% are not watching Gen V. Oh, uh, but 41% do are watching and love it, so that's encouraging. 5% didn't hear about it, and 5% tuned in, but it wasn't for them. So that's not bad. So like 90% are aware of the show, uh, but, you know, then it's split. A little, a little bit more in not watching it. That's interesting. That's really interesting. I think that the boys cast a very wide net. Um, with its conservative commentary, which I think ironically also does appeal to some conservatives. So it allows them to have a broader appeal. Whereas I feel Gen V is like a knee jerk response to that and goes mostly in a more liberal direction. And I think fascinatingly, I think they might've limited their audience, which is uh, surprising. Let's see here. Ah, uh, Angela, I hope you're having a great day too. Jacob says, when will Ahsoka season two probably come out? Oh, it could be quite some time because uh, they haven't even officially announced it yet. Uh, as told by Alex's High Grace, hope all is well, can't wait for Loki. Is seeing Ant-Man first needed? Also, I don't watch Gen V because I find the boys too crass for me. Yeah, it's pretty crass. And Gen V is even crasser, to be honest with you. Wait till you see today's episode. My goodness. Um, but uh, you don't need to have seen Ant-Man. To see Loki season two, all you have to have done is watch Loki season one. That's it. It's very self-contained, which is great. Oh, here, I'll share my Halloween bowl with you. I'm eating blueberries, so very healthy snack. Uh, but this is my Halloween bowl. This is my favorite side of it. I like this side the best. Uh, so I like it. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. Oh, a lot of you said Gen V was a little too crass for you. That's interesting. Okay, let's see here. Oh, everybody's wishing Dimitri a happy birthday. That's so nice. Buck's Basement is rooting for Theo and Mabel to get together. Yeah, Mabel needs a little bit of a better storyline next season. 
Uh, Mika says, do you think that the SAG strike will end next week? Uh, that would be great. I mean, they're meeting tomorrow and a little bit on, uh, on, on Monday. Uh, I think that they have really difficult things to hash out for the actor's str uh, strike. Uh, and I think they have a whole lot more people that are affected by it. Uh, I think it's going to be a little harder. And I think that some of the things they're asking for are a little bit harder asks. So I still think it would be wonderful if it was over, if it was over next week, but I still suspect it might take till the end of the month. Liam, I did see the new Real Housewives of Beverly Hills trailer. It got so trashy, I'm a little bit embarrassed that I watch it. But everybody needs their, their thing that kind of gives them their, their break. They can just turn their brain off. And for me, it's some reality TV. I watch The Amazing Race. I watch Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. And then I watch um, uh, Million Dollar Listing LA. And those are just so fun for me. So, I mean, I don't know. If it gets too trashy, it might be hard to keep watch it, watching, but so far, I'm not ready to quit. Let's see, hold on, I see some more questions coming in here. Um, let's see here. Jonathan says, do you think the Marvel will still open no in November? If so, what do you think its opening weekend will be because of no promotion be with, with the strikes? Well, I think it's definitely going to open. In fact, tickets go on sale on Tuesday, and we might even get a final trailer that day. I haven't been able to 100% confirm that, but I think there's a good chance. Uh, I think I think the opening will be low for a Marvel movie. I think it'll probably, if I had to guess, maybe open around 50 to 60 million. Uh, let's see what the reviews are like. Maybe it actually is a great movie, as some people are saying it could potentially be, like they've hidden a lot of it, which I don't know why they would do that. Uh, so I got to see the thing first, uh, but you know I, I I think it's gonna I think that movie always had a tough path in front of it. Oh, let's see here. Du, 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 du. Max says, would you ever do a live Q and A version of this with an audience? Well, I don't know. You never say never, Max. But I don't know how you know under in what venue. Maybe like at a comic book convention someday. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. That's tough. That, you know, that takes a lot of organization. And I'm, I am, you know, I am but a single person. You know, other people sometimes are uh, in, in the same space or with, you know, companies. Uh, but anything that I do, I mean, my being independent gives me a lot more freedom to say and do what I want. I mean, I told you a long time ago, I was, I was th pitching a piece for somebody. Uh, and I said, I wanted to talk about the ups and downs of Colin Farrell's career. Uh, and the, the person I was pitching to said, uh, we don't want to say anything bad about Colin Farrell. And I was like, Colin Farrell, I think, is pretty aware that he's had some real low points in his career. And I was like, hey, it's going to end on a positive note. The whole reason I want to do this piece is that he has a big movie coming out that everybody's excited about, so it ends on a good note. And they just didn't want to do it. They were like, we don't want to say anything bad about Colin Farrell. And I was like, that's ridiculous. Uh, and so that's just, you know, a lot of times what legacy media, uh, for lack of a better term, what you know how they how they you know especially in the entertainment space how they how they handle coverage but anyway i therefore have to pay for all my own transportation i have to pay for all my own hotel i have to pay if i was going to do any event i'd have to pay for my own security i'd have to pay for the venue so it becomes a little more complex ron says thoughts on tom taylor's nightwing the art is awesome but i'm curious about your opinion overall that's a good question, I ready. For those of you that he's talking about uh, the Nightwing comic book, I think that it's gotten a little repetitive. The artwork is incredible, but I feel like at this point it's going in circles. And, you know, there's only so much good that Nightwing can do before it gets really boring. So, and also I feel like it was great that he and Barbara are back, to, Barbara are back together, but yet they're like kind of not going anywhere now. So I'm still picking it up because the art is so good. And at a point, the, co the comic book was really good. But I, I, it's not like top of my stack. Uh, Josh Harding says, Grace, what do you think about the two-part Western horizon that Kevin Costner is putting out? That's funny, Josh. I was just talking to a friend of mine on the phone about it. I was like, did you see this Kevin Costner movie that's coming out? It's two parts. So for those of you who haven't heard, Kevin Costner is back. And he has a two-part Western coming out next summer. The first part comes out in June. And then the second part comes out just two months later in August. And the teaser was released today by Warner Brothers, and it's Kevin Costner on a horse, 
And he turns around and he fires the gun basically towards the camera. And he's like, oh, Horizon. And then Horizon comes up. They say it's a historical thing, but they didn't say what it was about at all. And then, and then there's like a flag in Horizon. So I'm like, he's really leaning into that Yellowstone fandom. And then the cast came up and there were some not so great, so great names in there. I was like, ah, oh, you know, Kevin Costner, I think you'd be able to do a little better. But so the first thing I said to my friend was, I was like, you know, it's like everything Kevin Costner ever made. Kevin Costner on a horse with a gun. I mean, that's like his whole thing. But I got to tell you, I really enjoy Kevin Costner movies. I think, I, by the way, I watched the new Elemental behind the scenes documentary about Peter Stone, uh, about how he made Elemental for Pixar. And he was talking about going to the movies as a child. And then he said his mother had a huge crush on Kevin Costner, which I thought was hilarious. So I'm particularly feeling good about Kevin Costner right now. I'm like, look at what joy he brought Peter Stone's mother. And I've watched some old Kevin Costner movies recently. like. I think about a couple, like about a month or so ago, I got into like a, um, my parents and I got into like a Kevin Costner kind of a mood. So we would be like, what, what old movie do you want to watch? And we'd be like, let's watch Kevin Costner. He's always reliable and fun. So we watched like Field of Dreams again. And I think we watched something else. And I was like, you know, Kevin Costner does really deliver. So at the end of the day, I'm not like 100% sold on this Western that he has coming out. But I, you know, I, I'm kind of into it because I think Kevin Costner, like stars used to be, is for the most part pretty reliable. So maybe I would see it. I just, I gotta learn, I gotta learn a little bit more about it. Hey, Mr. Poppy. Hey, Ahmed. Mr. Real Shane says, do you think we should be worried about the short runtime of the Marvels? You know, no, I don't think so, Mr. Real Shane. I don't think every movie has to be super long. I think the Marvels, if it doesn't overstay its welcome and it can maybe get a lot of show times in there, good for them. You know, I just hope it's good. I'm so scared it's going to be awful. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Leon says, are you reviewing Saltburn? It's trending in the UK. Dab, dab. I like the dabs. Maybe, you know, I reviewed Maestro and, you know, not a lot of interest in the awards films, I got to say. I mean, I'll get to them eventually and I probably will do them as group reviews that I did with an awards season, I think, last year with awards season movies. But I don't know if I'm going to review them individually. I'm very proud of my Maestro review. And I want to thank everybody for the very kind comments that did watch it, that they left on there, saying it was one of my best reviews. That really meant a lot. Uh, but, you know, it took a lot of my time. Uh, time to go see the movie. It was a 20-minute review. Those are very long to edit. Uh, I really am very proud of how that review turned out, though. Uh, but, you know, just not enough return for the, the investment of time. So, uh, I'll event, I mean, I'm a Critics' Choice member, so I get screeners eventually, so I'll see all these movies, but it's going to probably be like a little bit of time before I review them. I'm not going to rush to review them anymore because of that. Uh, Jose says, have you seen the last Hunger Games trailer? What do you think it will do at the box office? And do you think Rachel Zegler hate will bring it down? Yeah, Rachel Zegler, boy, she's really having a rough time. And I mean, on the one hand, I feel bad for her because I feel it is partially because she's a woman. Uh, but on the other hand, I think she's not doing anything to alleviate it. In fact, she seems to be leaning into it. I don't know if you saw her comments about Taylor Swift. And I agreed with what she was saying to a degree, quite frankly. But I was like, Rachel Zegler, this is not your space. You know, like, I think Rachel Zegler needs to focus on Rachel Zegler and making herself a star, an actress. Uh, you know, I think that's her social media background coming in. But I mean, like, you know, if Taylor Swift isn't saying anything about it, just, you know, let, let Taylor Swift handle it. You know, I think, you know, it's like hard enough fighting your own battles, quite frankly. Uh, so I just, you know, when I, when I was just like, oof, you know, like I really feel Rachel Zegler could benefit from media training, uh, you know, for press training, PR training. And I don't, I mean, I don't know. I mean, sometimes I was talking to a producer once about um, uh, a certain actress and I was like, why doesn't anyone say anything to this actress? Because she's just creating so many problems for herself. And the person said, well, you know, since this person's very vocal, nobody wants them to be vocal about them and say, guess who came to me and told me that I was a problem? And so, I, as I've said before, don't, don't be that person. Don't be someone that people can't come to and tell you something uh, because you're only going to hurt yourself. You know, everyone's just going to be like, let them walk off the edge of the cliff. I mean, don't you want to know if you're headed towards the edge of a cliff? Let's see here. Julio, I couldn't make the, the Exorcist screening uh, on Tuesday, as I said. I decided to instead prioritize the Ahsoka uh, uh, breakdown. Uh, but um, apparently it's awful, and so I'm glad I didn't sit through it. 
I've been dealing with some personal, like, family stuff over the past few weeks, as many of you know. Uh, everything's fine. Everything's fine, but it's just taking up a lot of my time. Uh, I'm hoping that after, like, the next couple of days, uh, I can get back to focusing on fully on, on, my, on my work. Uh, so I apologize. I apologize that I had to drop The Exorcist. Uh, but, you know, it's just sometimes... Sometimes when I have like my personal life come into play, I stumble a little bit and then it's a little bit of work to get back on track. But don't worry, I'll get back in my groove. I'll get back in my groove. The Loki breakdown will be ready when the episode ends this evening. I feel bad that my personal life really affected my Ahsoka coverage. Uh, but for Loki, don't worry about it. Let's see here. Ah, uh, Danny, I'm glad you enjoyed my Ahsoka breakdowns. Oh, Aubrey, thanks for gifting memberships. What an adorable photo, Aubrey. That's so cute. And thank you for just joining. Wow, you joined and you, you gifted a membership. That's very nice. Daniel says, please review poor things. Uh, your maestro review is amazing. Ah, thank you. I'm definitely going to review poor things. I couldn't get into the NYU, uh, I mean, I couldn't, NYU. I couldn't get into the New York Film Festival screening for it. I forgot to get my press pass on time, so I couldn't go to the press screening. Uh, and then they didn't have enough space, uh, you know, uh, for, what was it, Fox Searchlight. Didn't have enough space. So that's why I didn't review poor things. But I'm definitely going to review poor things. Like the big movies I'm going to review, for sure. Um, are the big awards contenders. Matt says, can we, serve, uh, can we convince you to watch Jedi Fallen Order and Survivor cutscenes like we convinced you to watch Rebels? I don't know. I don't know. I got to watch like my, uh, I have Godzilla. They're showing some Godzilla, um, you know, a monarch monsters, you know, the Apple TV show. They're showing those episodes or at least uh, two of them or something at Comic-Con. If you're going to New York Comic-Con, go to that panel. They're going to show you some stuff. Uh, so I can do a social media embargo pretty soon. So I got to watch that. And I have other screeners I need to work towards. Um, so that's like, so it's hard for me to go back. Uh, like, so if I, if I really don't feel something's worth my time or if I hate something so much and it requires like a uh, fall house of the fall of Usher, fall of the house of Usher, I'm like, I'm not going to watch like six, seven hours of garbage. It's just, it's just too much, you know? Although not that the Jedi, the Jedi stuff is, is garbage, but, you know, it's hard for me to set aside three to four hours to watch cutscenes. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do about Spider-Man 2. Uh, Mike's, Mike's World says, did you watch Better Call Saul? Bob Odenkirk is nominated for Best Actor, and I must say I totally see it. Those last three episodes were truly haunting television. Yeah, I loved that show for a while. It got kind of repetitive for me, so I stopped watching it. And to be honest with you, I don't see myself getting back into it. And I don't see Bob Odenkirk quitting, quite frankly. I think I feel he's always going to be a bridesmaid because something more interesting always comes across at the, and, and takes the award away from him, unfortunately. But I love Bob Odenkirk. I think he's definitely a TV legend anyway. Um, and uh, but So I just haven't seen it. But it, I, mean, I haven't finished it. But it's a great show. Oh, Orlando, first time being a member. Welcome. I'll watch says it's small potatoes TV, but will you watch and review Feud Capote versus the Swans? I'm reading Capote's Women, and so far it's a good read. I don't know if I'll review it, I'll watch, but I'll, de I'll definitely watch it because I really like the first feud. Again, I think too small of an audience probably for YouTube, but I'm certainly into it. Uh, Eric, I love Encanto. Big Encanto fan. Who gifted a bunch of memberships? Franco! Thank you for gifting five memberships. Thank you so much. Uh, Thomas says, you bring so much joy to me in the BTT community. I got my three-year Emerald badge today. Oh, I love it. Looks great. How is SNL coming back with the SAG strike? Uh, thoughts on the upcoming hosts? Well, Thomas, apparently they got a waiver. That's SAG. They're willing to hand out a lot of waivers. I'm kind of actually looking forward to the Pete Davidson show. I think that could be a lot of fun. I bet you John Mulaney shows up. Uh, who I'm also, who I'm a really big fan of. And I respect Pete Davidson. I don't always like Pete Davidson's work, but I think he's pretty good. Uh, so that looks good to me. Although I don't know about Bad Bunny about uh, as hosting. Uh, I think it's funny that Bad Bunny and Timothy Chalamet are both dating the Jenner sisters at the same time. I'm like, what are you doing, Timothy Chalamet? How are you in this group? Uh, let's see here. Uh, Tiff, I just talked about Spider-Man 2. We'll see. We'll see what's going on that week. But again, four hours is like, it's a lot to watch. Uh, oh, Roasting Phoenix, first super chat. Do you think DC should give up on live action, especially with the bad streak they have been having, and take advantage of the new animation wave 
and try to corner the animation market. Ah, uh, no, I don't think so. I, I think let's have, let's let James Gunn have his day. Let's see how he does, quite frankly. So I, I wouldn't say that. I, I think they should, you know, I think that this, if, if, this, if this doesn't work out, they need to take a break. But I think, you know, I think that, you know, we're already down this path. Let's see how it, at least the first entry goes. Tammy says, Grace, my guilty pleasure is Parking Wars, so don't feel bad. I've never even heard of what Parking Wars is. That sounds hilarious. Uh, Rosho, thank you for gifting five memberships. Mm. Jake says, when you watch early screeners, do you still watch the episodes weekly while they release, or do you prefer to only watch them once? That's a great question. I watch them uh, when I get them, but then for shows that I'm breaking down, I watch them again to break it down. Like, for instance, I watched all four episodes of Loki last week, uh, but then this morning I watched Loki episode one again to do my notes uh, because I want to dig, dive in deeper. I want to see the details and things that I might have missed the first time around. And also I want to put myself in the headspace that you're going to have having just watched that one episode. Uh, so it's, it's, it refocuses me. Diana says, do you have any fresh tea to serve us? Preferably anything in the MCU. Ah, uh, sorry, I don't have, I'm afraid I don't. Uh, I don't have any tea right now. I wish I did. Uh, but as for um, uh, the October watch along, I really wanted to do Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning on Tuesday, uh, but I might have a personal thing on Tuesday. I don't know yet. I'll let you know. Uh, but I'm curious, I'll see, I'll ask people if they want to wait to watch Mission Impossible, maybe over the weekend, because I think that would be a really fun uh, movie club watch along. Aaron says, do you think that Rachel Zegler is single-handedly destroying the Snow White reboot? It's not good. I got to see a trailer, though. I'm trying to keep an open mind on Snow White. I'm trying to keep an open mind on the Marvels. I'm trying to keep an open mind because I see a lot of hate being leveled at these projects that I fear, feel has reached like an unfair level. And so I'm trying to give them the benefit of the doubt. But boy, do they need to deliver quality to not just be completely slaughtered. Um, let's see here. All right, let me answer a couple of uh, uh, non-supers. Hold on, let me see where I am. Justin, thank you for gifting 10 memberships. Wow, that's so nice of you. Tiff says, oh, Grace, your streams are always the best part of my day, which I'm sure most people here feel the same. What a nice thing to say, Tiff. That really makes me feel nice. Uh, that's what was important for me to, to get on here and do this stream today. Uh, JB says you're a person first and a content creator second. Uh, I, I don't know. Sometimes, you know, being a content creator is very important to me. And I, I really want to make sure I deliver for you, uh, for, for those of you who, who enjoy my content. So that really matters a lot to me. I take that very seriously. But I do appreciate uh, the comments, JB. I always feel very guilty. Uh, Inconsolable says, will you eventually be forced to watch One Piece if it gets enough Emmy attention? You know what's going to force me to watch One Piece? When they have season two coming out. Like, I almost started to watch uh, uh, The Last of Us, you know, part two, the, the game footage. I want to watch that game footage to cover the second season. However, uh, I realized how far away The Last of Us is. Like, when Invincible came out, I sat down because I loved Invincible so much, and I read all the comics for Invincible, like 15 years worth of comics. And I got to tell you, I forgot most of it. So it's really hard for me to break it down because it's not fresh in my mind anymore. And so that really sucks. And so I don't think I'm going to be watching stuff unless I know that the, 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 the next version of it is on the horizon so that I don't forget it. Oh, let's see here. Ah, oh, writer boy, thank you. Peter, Loki drops, and that's very generous of you, Loki drops at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Max says, when do you think we'll get a trailer for Joker 2? Well, it comes out in a year. Maybe like at Comic-Con, if Comic-Con is a thing this year. Maybe we'll get a Joker trailer. Aw, uh, thanks, X3 Apologist. I appreciate you. All right. Ricky, Invincible Season 2. I just was talking about Invincible. Invincible Season 2 is um, coming out at the beginning of November. And then, uh, let's see here. Here's a fun question. Welm says, Grace, you clearly work hard and spend hours upon hours filming and editing. Staring at a screen all day can be tough. 
What do you do to break from the routine and reset yourself to keep your sanity? I love to go for walks and I just like to blue sky. I think that is really important. Sometimes I will just like, I make sure I take every Saturday off uh, and I'll just kind of like take time to myself and just make sure I go outside and stretch my legs um, and just trying to like take in the city and stuff like that. And I try and make sure I go and do fun things. Uh, yeah. And you know, I have, I, I, I think it's really important for everybody to identify the things that kind of like give them a break and you know what, even if it's like trashy TV, like what allows you to like recharge. And I, even if it's something small, like watching the amazing race or reading comic books, like my comic books are very important to me. Uh, just making sure that you do that, I think really helps everybody just to kind of keep their sanity. Zay says, Grace, do you think the Five Night at Freddy's movie is not very good and that's why they sent it to streaming? I'm excited for it, but afraid it won't live up to the hype. You know, that doesn't necessarily mean it's not good, but it might not be at the level of a movie for theatrical release. You know, it might play more like a streaming movie, and maybe that's why they decided to do it. Um, that's the only thing I can think of that's positive. <laughs> Andrea says, Grace, will you do a movie watch along for Halloween? Uh, no, no, uh, I'm gonna, I, I, I'll do something maybe around then if we don't do Mission Impossible. But the thing is, is that um, I do stuff with my family on Halloween. So uh, I, I'm gonna be doing that. Even though Halloween's on a Tuesday, which kind of is rough. Elliot, it'll be worth it staying up for Loki until 2 a.m. for your, your time. It's worth it. All right, let me go. I'm seeing everything. Reese says, will you review Priscilla? Probably at some point, yes. It might be in a group of reviews, like I might group a bunch of movies together, but I will review Priscilla. Jose says, if I miss Boys sees, the Boys Season 3, will, re, will, 3, will I be lost with Gen V? I don't think so. I think Gen V is pretty self-contained. I think you'll be okay. Although, Boys Season 3 was great. You should just watch that because it's so good. Mr. Magic says, would you like to see, who would you like to see as Nightwing in either Gunn or Reeves' universe? Well, with, with Reeves, Robert Pattinson is younger, so I think you really have to go with Dick Grayson as Robin for that place. But since they're going to do an older Batman with Damien for Gunn, then you could have an adult Nightwing. And I've always liked um, uh, Zac Efron for the role. I think he has the beefcake element that Nightwing is so famous for. Uh, I think he has, he looks a little bit like a comic book illustration with his very sharp features. Uh, and he's certainly become very muscular. He's real, you know, some would say he maybe he's overdone it a little bit. But I think he'd be a great Nightwing. I still like Zac Efron for that role. Uh, Lisa, the Emmys have been moved to January, which is kind of fun actually. Because for once, we'll have all the things that want, you know, the Golden Globes, I don't really know what's going to happen with those. Uh, they're having a big problem trying to bring those back. But that means that the Critics' Choice Awards and the Emmys will both be in early January. So that'll be a lot of, lot of fun, I think. A lot of good sh popular shows are being Emmy nominated this year. I'll cover the Emmys uh, and I'll live tweet them because it's going to be a fun night. Ah, Debut Foster just got gifted a membership. I love it. Oh, La Pumpkin de Chaser. Ah, oh, that's so nice. Uh, let's see here. A Little Piece of Wonder says, Hi, Grace, did you see the last episode of Only Murders? Yes, we were just talking about that. I thought it was fun. I thought Paul Rudd did an incredible job. I really liked um, the, the job he ended up doing. I thought his role ended up being quite complex. Brett Crandall says, Down for a cost, cost, cost renaissance. Prince of Thieves' score was the trailer soundtrack of our youths. And Field of Dreams, Chef's Kiss. Oh, Brett, I'm so glad that you also are a Costner fan. Yeah, if you're looking for some actor to get into, you can, you, it's hard to do wrong with Kevin Costner's library of movies. Even something like A Perfect World is really good. I mean, he's great. He does a really good job. Barbara Seville says, Glenn Close was supposed to do Sunset Boulevard years ago, but funding dropped or something. Why doesn't she finance it herself? Well, actually, Barbara, Glenn Close did do Sunset Boulevard on Broadway. It's a musical, and I, in fact, saw it. And I have to tell you, it was awful. So I don't think she should put any money into that. Uh, I mean, it was a cool, cool production. I appreciated the production values, and it was cool to see Glenn Close live, but it was an awful show. Like, I kind of, I, my whole family went... I kind of liked it because of the production values. I was like, that's pretty cool. But uh, my whole, my, the rest of my family was like, this is awful. And they were, they were tempted to leave. That's how bad it was, even though we paid for the tickets. A 
Malik, I'm so glad you made the live. Adam, don't worry about being late. No problem. Kish and Chip says, scale of one to 10, how desperate are you for that Loki, for the last two Loki episodes? What did you think of the cliffhanger at the end of four? Oh, 10 plus anticipation. I was shocked at the cliffhanger at the end of episode four. I was like, what the heck's gonna happen? It was an amazing cliffhanger. Ah, oh, thanks for that, Marcus. I really appreciate your comment. Uh, let's see here. Hey, filmmaker. Tiff, I'll try to watch. You, know, you guys, I guess I'll ask you guys what you want to do for the watch along for BTT Movie Club. I'll ask if you want to do Mission Impossible or if you want to do like a scary movie. And then you guys can decide. Nico says, hey, Grace, Paris Hilton. Where'd it go? Oh, Barbara, thank you for gifting five memberships. Do, 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 do. Where'd it go? Ah. Oh, my goodness. I'm sorry I'm behind here. Dancing Dog 60, thank you for gifting some memberships. Very generous of you. Where did it go? Oh, my goodness. I'm so far behind on the questions. I'm getting to them. I'm getting to them. Nico says, hey, Grace, Paris Hilton biopic series coming from A24. What are your thoughts? I'm very impressed with, a with Paris Hilton's business acumen right now. Not only did she just get signed that deal, but she's going to do shopping uh, content on Twitter with, uh, with um, Elon Musk. So I bet that's going to maybe be something for her. So good for her for thinking outside of the box and reinventing herself. Mr. Poppy says, has the celebrity or studio executive ever confronted one of your sources to find out if you were there, if they were your source, do you mean? Mr. Poppy, I can't talk to you about what happens with my sources. I don't want to get anybody in trouble. I can't discuss it in any shape or form, but I appreciate your curiosity. Ben 10 says, what about the rumors? Are those true about Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds having a huge role in Secret Wars? Ah, uh, yeah, I think that's so true that I wouldn't even really call it a rumor anymore. It's something to look forward to. Franco Tellez says, I'm just worried about the musical part of Joker 2. Uh, as I told you, it's going to, I think, be wound into like musical therapy and stuff like that. I think it'll be okay. I mean, it's Lady Gaga, right? I think it'll be okay. I really trust Todd Phillips at this point, quite frankly. Ah, uh, thanks, Prometheus. That's right. If you want to like and subscribe to the video, even if you can't be a member, it costs nothing to do those things. So, hey, why not hit that like button and subscribe? I would appreciate it. I always feel weird asking people to do that. Let's see here. Let's see. Poke says, thank you for the person who gifted me a membership. Poke, you're so interactive. I'm glad the YouTube algorithm picked you. Love you, Grace, and your community. What do you think about the new DC sound stages in Leavesden? Well, I'm excited about it. I mean, that's great. I mean, I don't know how James Gunn has enough hours in the day when he's doing those sound stages and he's working on, well, he has, I guess he has time right now because the writers, I mean, the actor's strike still has uh, Superman Legacy delayed. But he recently said he was starting to work on Peacemaker season two, writing season two. So I still feel he's too involved in the creative to really run DC. But, you know, let's see. I'd love for him to prove me wrong. I love it. Uh, Rosh says, hey, Grace, what coming actors, creators do you think we should keep an eye on in 2024? We, who might be a breakout? Hope you're doing well. Ah, uh, thanks, Rosho. Um, I still think, you know, we're wondering what projects are going to come out still. You know, I think it's a little, you know, and also you never know who gonna, who's going to be a breakout because they're a surprise. I'd love to see Jenna Ortega perhaps capitalize a little bit more on her Wednesday popularity. I feel she hasn't really been able to do that. Arun says, hey, Grace, the media is so busy touting Oppenheimer's success, we never get to fully digest, we never got to fully digest Mission Impossible's lack of success. What do you think the repercussions will be? Well, I'm sure they're terrified for the new Mission Impossible that they've already basically filmed. I think that it, the repercussion will be uh, no more Mission Impossibles, particularly if this next one doesn't do well either. And I think it's really going to hurt the next one because it's very much a two-part part story. I don't see how you can watch Mission, Poss Mission Impossible 8 if you haven't seen Mission Impossible 7. So it hits digital on Tuesday. It's a phenomenal film, so I really hope people check it out. Lena, I don't think Lupita Nyong'o would be a good Nubia. I think she, again, as I've said before with people saying she should be a, a Storm 
uh, casting person. I think she has a too soft a quality to her to play that type of character. Alexander says, will the Gen V release hurt the Loki numbers? I think it's the other way around. I think you thought Gen V was struggling before. I think Loki's going to make it very difficult for that show. Recognize Justy says, super grateful today. My sister just had her baby. Oh, congratulations. And that makes you an uncle. Little Finley Joe. Now I'm Uncle Justy. Oh, I love that you value your independence, Grace. We do too. Ah, oh, thanks, Uncle Justy. That's awesome. Oh, that's so great. That's so adorable. I'm so happy for you and your family. You have a new member. Uh, Rafa Vision says, hey, Grace, do you think the Wasp has a future part in the next Avengers movies? I feel they're so underrated and deserve much better. Do you mean the Wasps? The Wasps, you know, right? Um, I hope so. There's supposed to be a cool Wasp adventure in the upcoming uh, What If animated show. Yeah, I, don't, I like Wasp as a character, and I think her power set is really cool, and she's just never really gotten a chance to shine. But I think there's a small chance it might be too late because she's just been in too many bad movies, both of them. You know, both versions of the Wasp. Marina says, did you see that Taylor Swift's Eras Tour film has already earned a record-breaking $100 million in advanced ticket sales? I did. And I felt very bad for Beyonce. You know, I said just on Monday, I said, Beyonce shouldn't have done this. I think it's nerve. It's, it, I think it puts her in a very potentially damaging position. And sure enough, like the next day, and some of you tweeted me, it was announced that while Taylor Swift's first day of ticket sales was like $37 million or something, Beyonce only sold six to seven million dollar tickets, and I just felt really bad. I was like, oh, man. Kendi says, any Jonathan Majors news? No, that trial, we're still waiting for that trial to start. But along, I mean, I think the longer he's out of commission, I, I guess maybe the actor's strike is benefiting him to some degree because nobody's getting work. But, you know, it's taking a really long time. And he has the worst lawyers. He has such bad lawyers. They seem so unprofessional. Uh, Carlos says, hey, Grace, you've built an amazing community here. Will you be covering Comic-Con New York this month, my first time going? Uh, you know, I could find myself maybe heading down there. I'm not sure. I don't have a badge. Um, but, you know, I'll keep an eye on it for sure. But New York Comic-Con is a lot of fun, Carlo. As I said, check out that Mon Monarch Monsters panel. They're going to apparently do something really fun. I'd also maybe check out the Matthew Von Argyle panel. I think, you know, I, have a, I'm not, I can't say for sure, but you might want to be at that panel. The panel sucks. You can always leave. Uh, let's see here. Paul, uh, no, Raul Reynolds says, Grace, what is your favorite American horror story season? Mine is Coven. I'll tell you, Raul, I turned on the very first episode of American Horror Story and was like, nope, this is too creepy for me. This is too scary for me. And I turned it off, and I've never seen an episode since. Uh, Mike's, uh, Mike's MMA World says, please push through and finish Better Call Saul. I watched Succession based on your recommendation. Both shows are my Mount Rushmore. Uh, maybe, you know, maybe. I, since I already watched a lot of Better Call Saul, maybe I could see myself going back into that. I had a really good time with uh, The Sopranos. Dallas Graham says, are you going to watch Blue Eye Samurai, a Netflix animation in November, or Strange Way of Life with Daddy Pascal and Ethan Hawke? I don't know. Um, I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. I'm not sure. Austin Williams says, did you watch the Priscilla trailer, and what did you think? I did see the Priscilla trailer. I felt it was so similar to the recent Elvis movie with Austin Butler, and such a different take on the king. I don't know, I might be a, a scooch uh, Elvis out at the moment, but I did think it was a good story. And I do kind of like Sofia Coppola as a director with this type of material, so I'm still interested in it. I'm glad some of you enjoy my Zac Efron. I'm glad some of you, like Lisa, agree with my Zac Efron uh, casting. Oh, Sana, I'm so glad you like my shirt. Yes, uh, I got this shirt from Nordstrom, as I said. Sometimes I can go on Nordstrom uh, and get some really great shirts, but only online for some strange reason. Nick says, will the Gen V characters show up in The Boys? I don't know about that for sure, but I can tell you definitely that the ramifications, and I've only seen six of the eight episodes for Gen V, but it's definitely going to, you know, the, what happens in Gen V will definitely influence The Boys. I hope you're having a great day too, Zed Fox. I appreciate your positivity. 
Daniel Worley says, do you think Marvel could go with a hybrid team for X-Men, like Xavier and Magneto in the first class being from another universe, but newer mutants? You know, oh no, I don't know. I think that Kevin Foggy is a real purist. Um, so I, I told you, I, when I did my dream casting for the MCU X-Men back when it was first announced, I said they should do not the original team from Xavier, but the second more world, worldly global team that I think, I think that would have been a good choice. Uh, but I don't know if he's going to skip over. That would allow him to have Storm. It would allow him to have Colossus. You could probably put Kitty Pride in there. But he might also go with the animated series and, and have Jubilee because, you know, he uses the theme, the theme song from the animated series. Al Watch says, um, super excited for Joker 2. That still was amazing. Yeah, it was just him in the rain. But, you know, he was singing in the rain. I don't know if he was singing in the rain necessarily. But I thought that's this Joker 2. I'm very excited about it. Let's see here. Sleepless Night says, when do you think the SAG strike will end? As I said earlier, I think mo most likely by the end of the month. Uh, Vince Lamb points out with Kevin Costner you might not want to watch Waterworld or The Postman you probably not you know I mean you know what his most famous movies are uh, he has some really good ones Nate Griffin says the new image from Joker 2 was amazing can producers push directors to make their movies look better the look of a movie and the VFX make a big difference I don't know if the producers care as much you know I think I think that decision is made when you're hiring the director in the first place and they talk about their vision and you I mean although I have interviewed a couple of directors at this point and you hear their pitch and they're still going with it and it's so surreal to talk to them and be like wow your pitch is good but I've seen the product you delivered and it is not it does not live up to your pitch that to me is like really one of the most interesting things I've I've learned over the past year or so Ah, oh, Lisa, I'm glad you called my honesty my New York honesty. That's awesome. What a nice thing to say. Yeah, I'm a New Yorker. Let's see. Am I caught up here? Mm, hold on. Uh, let's see. I'm going back. I'm going back. Oh, sorry about this. Okay. Da, 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 da. LP says, Gracie, have you ever walked out of a movie for being bad? No, I don't think so. Uh, it's really hard for me to leave a movie, especially if I'm at the theater. I think my parents once, when I was little, they didn't realize that a movie had uh, full frontal nudity in it, so we left that movie. Uh, but for the most part, uh, I don't really leave movies. Hey, the musical lawyer, that's a great name. Ryan Deloney says, are you planning to watch review the Taylor Swift film? Knew there, no, there will be a, yeah, but Ryan, again, I, I decided I don't want to sit through three hours of Taylor Swift. Like at first I was like, yeah. But then I was like, when it started to come time to do it, I was like, I don't know if I actually want to do that. Jake Van Noren says, do you think Loki episode will have a lot of Twitter buzz tonight? I sure hope so, Jake. I think it should. I think it will. Although Ahsoka has, and I don't think the ratings for Ahsoka have been great. So, you know, Twitter, Twitter's a little bit of a different space these days. So it's a little bit harder to know exactly what it means to do well on Twitter. Bobby Rosa says, with all the delays, what do you think will come out first, Deadpool 3 or Cap 4? As I've said many times before, Bobby, I think Cap 4 is going to come out first, quite frankly, because it's done filming. Hey, fellow Grace in Australia. Ibrahim's, uh, Ibrahim says, Grace, do you think Filoni's Star Wars is too niche? Yes. As I've said in many of my reviews at this point, I think it's, it's, I'm a little nervous about it. 
Kitty Ariel says, I think Brandon Perea and Jenna Ortega are great options for upcoming MCU projects. You know, that's funny you say that, Kitty. Uh, Kitty Pride, right? Uh, you, you know, from a shadow cat from the X-Men, or Ariel was one of her names, as you have there. Uh, you say Brandon Perea, who was the IT guy in uh, Nope, he'd be a good Nightwing, too, if they wanted to go with someone younger. He'd be a great Nightwing. Oh, that's interesting. Rodney says, hey, Grace, any updates on Cameron Diaz's uh, film back in action? Is it ever going to happen? And is Charlie's Angels 3 in jeopardy now with Drew Barrymore's actions? Um, yeah, I don't think they'll ever. I think, I think Charlie's Angels 3 is dead because I think Drew Barrymore's career is pretty much over. Visionary says a Martin Luther King Jr. biopic is in the works with Chris Rock set to direct. I don't know. I watched Selma by Ava DuVernay a couple of years ago, and that was incredible. So I don't really know how anyone could top that. Paul Brunel says, what are your all-time favorite Halloween movies? I like The Shining a lot. Oh, I really like The Shining. Maybe I should watch that this year. I don't really like horror, scary. I like more elegant, scary movies. So I would have to try and find ones like that. You know, like um, uh, The Ghost of Mrs. Muir is a really good, creepy one. I like stuff like that. So I'll tr maybe I'll try and find those things. Wow, Seattle Law Nerd, you're always so generous. And, and look, you don't even have a question. Thank you so much. Thank you, I really appreciate that. Uh, Justin Tyler says, hey Grace, what does Joker need to do awards box office wise for Gaga to be considered a certified movie star? It just needs to perform close to how the first Joker did because she really has to make up for House of Gucci. So as long as she doesn't tank it, I think that I'll be good. Uh, Brett Crandall says, Carlo, come to my puppet show at New York Comic Con. Uh, oh, Brett, you're going to be there with your puppets. That's awesome. Asen says, Grace, why didn't you mention Renslayer, Ravona Renslayer, in your non-spoiler review for Loki? I touch on that a little bit in my breakdown tonight. She definitely comes back, but I just don't want to give anything away. Also, to be honest with you, I forgot. <laughs> I'll just be honest. I was going through the cast members and while she has an interesting role in season two, it's not nearly as interesting as everybody else. And I honestly just forgot to mention her. I feel very sorry for Gugu and Bata Ra, but when I was going through and I was editing it, I was like, damn. But don't worry, we'll talk about her in the episodes that she appears in. Caroline Lee, you're in Brazil, right? But that's great, you have a favorite spot in New York. You like the Bethesda Fountain? Oh, I like a whole lot of places in, in, in New York. I just think my, my favorite thing about New York City is that the neighborhoods are all so different and that you can so easily transition from neighborhood to neighborhood walking. That to me is really fun. Uh, a lot of times cities feel mostly the same, uh, but not New York. And so I love that. I love the variety of New York. I also love all the tourists. It makes me feel very much like I'm on vacation all the time, which I think is also a lot of fun. Uh, Greg Lazaro says, hi, Grace, who is your favorite Seinfeld character? Well, Jerry. I love Jerry Seinfeld. I'm a big Jerry Seinfeld fan overall. Uh, but when I watched Seinfeld over again during the pandemic, I really was, uh, I was really able to see the mastery and the craftsmanship of the rest of the cast. I would say George is my least favorite, though, I have to say. I, but I think that, um, you know, Kramer and Elaine, they have a lot of physical comedy to their work, and they do a great job. But yeah, I love Jerry. I think uh, his delivery is fantastic. Mad Jack, have I ever been to a drive-in? I have not been to a drive-in. One time my family went without me because I was covering Game of Thrones. <laughs> or maybe it was House of the Dragon. And they went to a drive-in theater and I had to miss it. I mean, I was happy to do it because my work's important, but they went and they had a really good time. Although apparently my dad got really cold and uh, was complaining a lot. But it was really cool and I've always wanted to go since. But then it was been the pandemic, so I couldn't go. But I missed it. But when I was at uh, Disney World, I ate at the Sci-Fi Drive-In, which is like a fake drive-in. Best hamburger, che best cheeseburger and fries I've had in a long time. So if you're ever in Disney World, go to the Sci-Fi uh, Cafe, the Sci-Fi Restaurant um, at Hollywood Studios. Ricky Minaj says, been a subscriber since 2020. Love your comment. I think Jamie Lawson should be Storm in the MCU. She's so regal in The Woman King. 
Oh, yeah, anyone in the Woman King could play Storm. That's an incredible, incredible. Uh, too bad Lashana. I mean, I don't know about Lashana Lynch for Storm. I sure wish. I love Lashana Lynch. I think she, she'll be coming. We'll have stuff to talk about with her. That's all I can say. But you probably heard the leak anyway. Gold Dust, Dust and Ice Maiden? Gold Dust and Ice Maiden? What a combination. Gold Dust and Ice. I love it. Uh, I have not seen the new Frasier yet, but I will give it a shot. I have a friend who refuses to watch it because Niles isn't on it, uh, but I'll, I'll try it. I had such a good time re-watching Frasier recently that that's why I'm willing to try it. Paul Brunel, thank you for gifting five memberships. I better get going soon so I can get back on this low-key breakdown. Chris says, do you frequent Broadway or off-Broadway shows? Any favorites or standouts? Huge musical theater fan here. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I go to a lot of Broadway shows. You know, maybe not like as much as like a huge Broadway fan would, but I go to a lot and I, I love them. I think they're great. I recently saw um, Back to the Future and I had a wonderful time. It was more of a theme park stage show, but like a really good one. Who just gifted a ton of memberships? Seattle Law Nerd. Thank you. That's so nice. Thank you for gifting so many memberships and your very uh, generous uh, 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 gift. Uh, what significant element do you anticipate in Deadpool 3 when it's released, says Writer Boy. Uh, I think the humor. I think it's going to be so funny. Hey, Emily Le uh, Leeming. I'm going back. Seattle Laundered. Castlevania is on my list, but I'm just so busy right now. I didn't get to it. Franco, keep that Loki enthusiasm. You're going to love it. Uh, Asensio, we had polls at the beginning. We had polls at the beginning, I'm afraid. Leonardo, thank you for joining. Katie Lady says, hey, Grace, have you seen the Sci-Fi Chucky series on AMC Plus? Uh, oh, oh, no, the Sci-Fi Chucky series or Interview with the Vampire on AMC Plus. Both are so good. You know, Katie Lady, I see that they're very popular, um, but um, I, haven't, uh, I haven't gotten a chance to watch either one of them. Alex F., thank you for gifting 10 memberships. That's very nice of you. Thank you. Okay, I think I'm caught up. Let me do a couple of... Uh, who just gift writer boy thank you for gifting five memberships let me do some non super chat questions charlie says grace what is your spoiler what spoiler over the years has been the hardest for you to hold your tongue about not telling you about loki has been, has been difficult and also some of the amazing reveals in the bo in, in gen v like there's some, some some just amazing stuff for gen v it's so hard not to be able to just be like oh my gosh hi brit hi to you too Max says, what do you think about the Taylor Swift Dazzler possibility? I think it's extremely high after they just went to that football game with her. Oh, let's see here. Hey, Mish. Hey, Nick Dean. Daniel Worley says, what's your favorite Regal Theater in New York City? I'm making my tr first trip this weekend from Tennessee. Oh, hands down. Well, you know, the Regal Union Square is a very nice theater itself, but it's not in a great neighborhood. Uh, I really like the Regal Battery Park. Uh, that's a fantastic movie theater. It's upstairs in the Conrad Hotel, so it's a little difficult to find, but it's really nice. It's really well maintained. And it's right next to Brookfield Place, which is this phenomenal indoor shopping uh, center. Uh, with an outdoor eating at places where you can see the Statue of Liberty. And then you can go down underneath uh, and you can transition into the, uh, I forget what it's called. It's like the Obelix or something. I don't know. I forget the name, but it's where the, the path train is. And then you can come out and go to Italy and there's a lot of cool stuff down there. And you can also, the, the, uh, the new One World Trade Center is right there. It's really fun down there. It's a great place, especially if you're visiting. You could spend a whole day there and have a great time. Ben 10 says, Grace, would you like Carol being back with her end game haircut? Uh, yeah, I like it when the comics and the movies match, quite frankly. I think that's important. Uh, Mish says, what's your favorite pizza toppings? Oh, I like, okay, I, well, plain cheese is great, but I like pepperoni and I also like Hawaiian. I'm a fan of Hawaiian pizza, I have to admit. And then I haven't had Domino's pizza for a long time, but sometimes you want, oh, the Oculus. Thank you, Andrew, it's the Oculus. Uh, but yeah, sometimes you want Domino's. 
And so my Domino's thing I used to like to get with my family, because you can't eat this by yourself, it's too much pizza, but I like one Hawaiian pizza and then one chicken and black olives pizza. That's actually quite good. I also used to love at CPK the tostada pizza, but they discontinued it, and I'm very sad. That was a great pizza. Although I always wanted all my toppings on the side because they put too much lettuce on the pizza. I was like, it makes the pizza cold. I really just wanted the black beans, the cheese, the ranch, uh, ranch sauce, and the to tostada um, crunchies, the, the, the nacho crunchies. And then also some tomato, diced tomato. I was like, get this lettuce off of here. I don't want this. Let's see here. Chicken mayo pizza, mayonnaise on pizza. I don't know how I feel about that. Bubbles, I do have my, I do have a pizza opinion. I was happy to be asked about it. <laughs> Uh, uh, Wenneber says, do you think Anakin will be back at another point? For sure. Watch my breakdown of Ahsoka season finale. There's just so much for Anakin. He's definitely coming back. Oh, Oliver says prosciutto and fungi, which is mushrooms on pizza. That's probably pretty good. I like prosciutto and melon. That's a delicious appetizer. Michael says Chicago deep dish is the only appropriate answer. I've never had actual Chicago deep dish pizza. I've always wanted to. I've only had Uno's close approximation. And I must say it is delicious. Jake Van Noren says, if Marvel's flops, is it Feige or Nia DaCosta's fault? Uh, probably mostly Feige, because anyone can see that he really stripped away any individuality out of that movie. Although I would really also probably blame Brie Larson. I think Brie Larson had a lot, a lot of say in that movie. Pizza with barbecue sauce. I've only recently gotten into barbecue. For a long time growing up, I hated barbecue. I think because I grew up in New York City and never really ate a lot of it. Uh, let's see here. Jacob says, how will the new Exorcist do at the box office? Isn't that the big question? I'm very curious myself to find out. The, the reviews are have not been good. Travis says, pineapple does not belong on pizza. I disagree, Travis. Although Jonathan gets my uh, chicken and black olives from Domino's. Oh, you guys are making me want pizza. I can't eat pizza right now. I can't eat it. Ah, oh, darn it. I'm really trying to stick to my, my food regimen. Chicken and broccoli, Charlie Michael. Oh, this is interesting. Okay, that'll be fun. Let's put your weirdest, or like what pizza combination do you like? James Humphreys, are you in Italy? I love traditional Italian pizza. Like, you know, the way it's made in Italy, it's so delicious. Bochuli says, hope to get you premiere a game stream before I get to a ruby. Just one month to a new badge. I don't know what you're saying, Bochuli. I don't think I'm going to get a game system in a month. Let's see. All right. Mashed potatoes and rosemary on pizza. My goodness. Truffle pizza sounds delicious. Mexican spicy pizza. Oh, I, th I think that sounds pretty good. Ham and mushroom. A chicken Alfredo pizza. Oh, you guys, this is some interesting stuff. Pizza with an egg. I've heard of that, Nick. Uh, in the UK, they like to put an egg on pizza. Chicken tikka pizza in Pakistan. Oh, that sounds good, Caden. Uh, let's see here. Banana Gagastan? Oh, now I know how some people feel about my pineapple decision. Uh, let's see here. Cheese, pear, honey, and arugula pizza, says Danny Sands. That sounds delicious. I do like pear. Pear also makes for a very good salad. Rainbow sprinkles, Denzel. You just made that up. There's no way you put rainbow sprinkles on a pizza. Uh, James Humphrey says seafood pizza. Oh, that can be quite good. I like shrimp on pizza. That's, oh, that's excellent. Thank you for reminding me that. There's a restaurant downtown near the IPIC that has like a shrimp pizza and also a very good cauliflower, app cauliflower appetizer. Seattle Laundered, I didn't forget about you. What are you talking about? I thanked you. I can't forget you. You're so generous, and you've uh, made so many people get, uh, get memberships. Potatoes and cauliflower rice, says Debut Foster, on pizza? Interesting. Stevie Lewinsky says, what is your favorite work of art or visual artist from any time in history? That's so interesting. Well, it's not actually visual. I'm actually going to pick something just because it's interesting. I really like Johann Strauss. I like the waltzes of Johann Strauss. 
Sometimes I just like to listen to classical music. It's really fun. And Johann Strauss is my favorite because I love the fantasy of waltzes. And I really like that from some old movies that I've seen. For instance, I actually watched Madame Bovary, which is a very sad, sad dramatic film, but I love Madame Bovary. And they have some really cool dances in that movie with waltzes. And I was like, that's so cool. And I was like, oh, I'm going to listen to Johann Strauss. So I really like Johann Strauss. Ah, uh, thanks for that little slice of cake, Al Watch. I did thank Lost Seattle Nerd for the $50 donation. For sure, I saw that. I thanked him right away. The musical lawyer also likes classical music. Ah, how, 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 how perfect. James Humphrey is going to 100 years of Disney in London. Oh, that's awesome. I'm very excited about their 100th anniversary special on the 15th. Oh, a new Star Wars deal, Jacob? Oh, let me see. Oh, that's not, I thought you, ah, oh, I thought it was like a new writing or movie deal. No, it's not that. Okay, so they're putting the Star Wars movies on broadcast television. What? I heard a rumor, somebody told me that Hollywood, I'll tell you some tea, but it's business tea. I heard that Hollywood, oh, Seattle Launder did another $50? Oh, you did? Oh my goodness, get yourself some dinner. Ah, oh, wow, what a dinner for $50. You're so sweet. Oh, have fun playing Mortal Kombat, Ricky. Have a good time. Uh, that's very nice of you, Seattle Law Nerd. All right, so here's the tea that I heard. I heard that Hollywood is like, man, all this new thinking is really biting us in the butt, and we're not making as much money as we used to. So I heard Hollywood is going to like totally go back in a lot of ways to old school, the way they used to do things in terms of the content that they make and the way they distribute it. And that's a really good example of it. They're like, why should we restrict Star Wars just to Disney Plus when we can play it on ABC and, on, and, 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 and sell it to c cable networks? And so they have like, we can make a lot of money that way. So I think that's, that's very interesting. Uh, Chris Vorna says, what is MCU dream casting that you would like to see? I don't know if I have any dream casting that I'd like to see. What I'd really like to see is them not stoop too low. I really hope that Kevin Foggy keeps it classy when it comes to the actors that he hires. I'm very nervous about that. I'm just scared. That's what I think could happen. Who just said that? What the Pop says, Mortal Kombat. I've been playing six, Street Fighter VI all night. It's 5.30 a.m. and I haven't slept. Yeah, those are two big fighting games right now, right? Uh, I hope you're playing both of them, What the Pop. But boy, you must be having a great time if, if you've been playing all night. 5.30 in the morning. You're watching the sun come up. That's incredible. I've done that working sometimes. It's crazy. You're like, wow, I worked all night. Oh, Rodrigo, thank you for gifting five memberships. And Staggervor says, I heard that there is a new animated Willy Wonka movie coming out. Is there any truth to that? I haven't heard anything about it. I'm afraid not. So, I mean, it might be true, but I can't confirm it. Gareth, thank you for gifting 10 memberships. Oh, that's so generous. All right, I better get working on Loki because I want to have it done in time that I can still have an evening. Okay, so uh, let me do some shout outs. You're right, Dr. Longmonkey, you're a member again. I love it. Shout outs, shout outs, shout outs. What are you up to? What's, oh, Seattle Law Nerd. Your generosity is unparalleled today. You and Thomas from like last week, just incredible. Look at all these people who are getting let in as memberships. Ah, oh, that's beautiful. Charlie says, I'm going to get sushi with my aunt. Oh, how that's so sweet that you're going with your aunt. Uh, let's see here, Votuli is in Seattle. Oh, th I think they're, ta they're talking about Seattle Law Nerd being so awesome. It's true. Uh, we love you too, Seattle Law Nerd. Let's see here. Sectum Sempra says, watching you on the DC subway on the way home from work. Oh, that's awesome. I'm glad you're out for the day. I hope you have a fun evening planned. Thanks for making me a part of it. 
Shahar is enjoying NSYNC's new song, like myself. Awesome. I, I wanted to cheer myself. I was a little stressed this morning. Was it this morning? Yeah. I was, or, or was it, maybe it was last night. I was very stressed out, and I was like, I'm going to listen to some music. And um, NSYNC cheered me up. Uh, ben Ten says, I'm dreaming. I want pizza now from, in France. Oh, hey, Ben Ten. Oh, I love France. So great. Gareth, thank you for gifting 10 more memberships. I always love seeing the Golden Girls with you, Gareth. Oh, Veronica, I'm sorry you're having a sick day, but good for you for taking care of yourself. While well, Timmy is drinking a nasty protein shake after the gym in Malmo. What's Malmo? But that's good. That's awesome. You know, it's going to be nasty for just a minute, Timmy, and then you'll be in good shape. Uh, Nick Dean says, uh, uh, just got a pumpkin iced coffee from Duncan. Ah, oh, I like it. Is it, a, is it iced spice coffee? Look at Seattle Law Nerd. Needed the love. Sending it back. Oh, I'm sorry you needed some love right now, Seattle Law Nerd. You got a ton of love. I mean, the karma coming your way for being so nice, from gifting so many memberships, I'm sure is really going to be great. Uh, Mish said, I asked about pizza because I made a butternut, butternut feta and pumpkin seed pizza. Wow, that is very creative, Mish. Sounds like you could have a cookbook. Chris Vornis says, I'm sick in bed in Southern California. I am performing in the musical Something Rotten tomorrow, so hopefully I will be okay by then. Oh, I hope so. What a time to get sick. Time to go and get some of that medicine. I find the Dayquil is very effective. Michael says, time to play Frisbee with the Husky Dog in Chicago. Ah, are you going to throw it towards some deep dish pizza, Michael? Oh, look, we've made everybody want pizza, like Bubbles Emporium. Although Daniel Harati is eating a Snickers bar in Scotland. You know what I love? Ice cream Snickers bars. Snickers ice cream bars. Those are fantastic. So delicious. That's funny, Brett Crandall. That timing is something rotten. That's a good theater joke. Wandering Seth says, over the water from Copenhagen. Oh, oh the Nielsen numbers are out. We'll talk about them on Sunday. Priscilla Delgado, you got a membership. I love it. What a great name. Fiction fan is eating some donuts. Oh, you're making me want a donut. Delicious. You know what I like? They're like so bad for you, but the Entenmann's donuts, you know, I don't eat this stuff anymore, but I miss it. Uh, the Entenmann's chocolate, you can buy a two pack of Entenmann's chocolate frosted donuts. And if you put them in the refrigerator, they are so good cold. Like they are so good. Uh, all the stuff I can't eat anymore. I had an egg today and blueberries. Mmm, delicious. Uh, Ramanzilla, that's a great name. It's coming from the east side of New York City. Seattle Lawnard says, yes, please describe everything you don't eat anymore. Oh yeah, hopefully I have a cheat day coming up soon. I feel like The Rock. You know how The Rock's like, cheat day. I know how, I, I feel his pain. And hopefully to some degree his gain. I have, this diet's been very effective. Uh, when I lose all my weight, I promised that I would share it so that I could pay it forward to help other people. Michael Mark, happy birthday. Manny says, Manny Fernandez says, what's your go-to for a cheat day? I have a list, Manny. I have a list on my phone so that I don't forget what I would like to have as a cheat day. Uh, what I'm probably going to do next is I want to make chocolate chip cookies, as you, guys, as you guys recommended, because I can't eat them out as much anymore because I can taste the chemicals. So one of you on the stream was like, you should make them from scratch. And I was like, great idea. So that's what I'm hoping to do. Jake Van Noren says, thank you for such an amazing stream today. You truly made so many people's days, and it means, ah, I'm really glad you feel that way, Jake. I'm not doing keto. Who asked that? Oliver Probst. I'm not doing keto. I'm doing the Mediterranean diet. Um, and I really did give up sugar and processed food. I'm really amazed. It was hard. Like, I had a few stops and starts there at the beginning. But once I started to see what the results were, uh, I was able to do it. Oh, Mish, you can just Google the Mediterranean diet. It's super simple. Caroline Lee says, it's dinner time here. Any suggestions? I always enjoy salmon. Uh, and what I'm having tonight is roast chicken with Parmesan cheese and almonds on top of it and a salad. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely, uh, Ilya. You got to leave the butter out to soften for cookies. 
SMR Goose, I did quit soda. Uh, I now drink mostly water and occasionally an iced tea. And I thought that maybe someday I would go back to diet soda, but I've actually decided to just give up soda permanently. Cause I'm like, I don't need to have it that much, you know? And again, when you don't have something for a long time, it's weird to go back to it. You, it's hard actually. So I kind of did, I never thought I'd be able to give up diet soda, but I have, and I don't drink it anymore. So now I, I only have uh, uh, water and uh, iced tea. So that's all I can really drink. So it's tough. Nick, I have been having chicken with almonds and Parmesan cheese a lot. You know why? Because it's delicious. And then also it's my mother's recipe. I haven't had time to do it the way that she does it. My mother's uh, recipe that she came up with was uh, chicken with almonds and Parmesan cheese and uh, celery over pasta. And it's one of the greatest things I've ever eaten. She used to make it all the time when I was growing up. And so not only do I like it, but it reminds me of my childhood. All right. I better get going. I love talking to you. You guys are great. I'm so glad I did this. I, there was not going to be, a, there's probably not going to be a live stream tomorrow for sure. There's not going to be a live stream tomorrow. I have some stuff I need to do tomorrow during the day, so I can't do it. Uh, but Loki breakdown this evening, movie math on Monday, and then a whole new week of fun. All right. Thank you for joining me. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye everybody. See you later for Loki. My, my breakdown will go up when you finish watching Loki, my breakdown will be ready. Okay. Bye everyone. Bye-bye.